What's up, heathens? Today we're talking about how atheists ground morality. I'm not a heathen, but great topic. Hi, my name is Lucas and welcome to Deflate, where you learn to tackle the skeptics' objections to Christianity. And today we're going to look at how John, aka the godless engineer, succeeds in not grounding morality. I don't really find it all that hard to ground my subject of morality because uh, the way I see it is that everybody creates their own moral foundation. Well, first of all, it's great to know John finds all of this easy. I mean, life is hard enough already, isn't it? So you've got to appreciate when easy tasks such as grounding morality come along. <laughs> <laughs> he then talks about people creating their moral foundation. And although he doesn't define what he actually means by that, I assume John suggests this to be the thing upon which morality is grounded. We all have our own moral foundation. That moral foundation is shaped by a lot of different factors. Some of those include like your parents, uh, the culture you live in, the time that you live in, and uh, the social norms that are forced upon you or taught to you, however you want to see that. I definitely agree with John that social norms, family, and the time and culture we live in shape us. But while he says that these things shape what he calls our moral foundation, I would personally go with saying that these things shape our moral perception or that they shape our perception of topics with moral relevance. As far as grounding what I think is right and wrong, um, I just do my best not to negatively affect those around me, like those in my community, those in my family and all that kind of stuff, and try to promote the most good. Okay, I'm sorry to break this to you, but this was a lot of talking in circles. You said that you try to promote the most good. But John, an essential part of the supposedly easy task of grounding morality is to actually explain what you mean by good and to give a plausible explanation for why you define it the way you do. You've done neither of these, and so you haven't even come close to grounding morality. Are you serious? What is the good in your atheistic worldview, John? Is it that which helps promote your genes, the survival of your family, your racial group, or the well-being of all of humanity? That's an important one, because each option has widely different implications. Or even more basic still, on what grounds can you claim that there is such a thing as moral good and bad in the first place? I mean, your fellow atheist Richard Dawkins tells us that the universe knows no purpose, no evil, no good, nothing but pitiless indifference. Similarly, you say that as far as grounding what I think is right and wrong, I just do my best not to negatively affect those around me, like those in my community. Now, all you've done here is state that what you think is right and wrong is tightly connected to the effects of your actions on your community. Fair enough. I'd probably agree with you here, but again, if you actually want to ground morality, you would have to tell us why, given your worldview, it is wrong to negatively affect those around you. I mean, if John does something that helps promote John's genes, like stealing from his neighbors, why, given atheism and our evolutionary drive for survival, should that be wrong? That's what animals or other animals, as you would probably put it, do all the time. And so all you've done is argue in a circle by saying that negatively affecting your community is wrong. But you haven't offered us a plausible reason why this is the case. So no, John, you haven't grounded morality. And there is no surprise here, since offering a plausible foundation for the good and the bad remains a rather challenging task from within the framework of an atheistic worldview. And actually sophisticated case for grounding morality within an atheistic framework is offered by Alex O'Connor. However, Alex's theory ends up turning rape into something good, which is, well, pretty weird. Watch my video over here to see why Alex's case fails gloriously. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.